Behind me, you see a breeding plot of sweet sorghum. And that's one of the aspects that we're working on. This is a plot that's multidisciplinary and bringing people from many uh, different areas of expertise and three different colleges together. And the whole idea is to produce alternative fuels. Uh, we know that petroleum products, uh, even though we still have plenty at the moment, they, uh, we will eventually need to replace them. And as we have more need, uh, we can replace them with things like ethanol or biodiesel. So this, this project uh, is working on producing ethanol from sweet sorghum. It came about from an idea from uh, someone in the business community coming to the university and saying, why don't we try sweet sorghum? So we put together a team of uh, scientists, and these scientists are from engineering. Uh, we have chemists, we have biochemists, we have agronomists, we have plant breeder geneticists, we have plant pathologists, we have folks who specialize in specialized products. All these were brought together to work on this project. So behind me is the breeding part, uh, where we look at different lines, and you might be able to see that they're different height, and we have uh, different amounts of sugar. So the basic idea is, is that this plant uh, has a sugar sap in the stem. We take that and we squeeze it. We take the sugar sap out and then uh, turn it into alcohol. And this is done uh, both in the lab and uh, we're doing it with a commercial company in Maricopa, Arizona. Well, the production of ethanol, of course, is not new in, by, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, however, what, uh, what we were interested in doing is, is, is exploring um, alternative crops to corn, which is currently typically used for ethanol production. Uh, one of the issues associated with corn is, is that it has a fairly low uh, conversion ratio from energy in to energy out, maybe in the vicinity of one, 1 to 1 1.5. So in other words, every one unit of energy in, you might get a yield, you know, again, half again as much. We we're looking at the sweet sorghum crop, which um, is, a, is a much higher biomass crop and has a higher energy to, to final product conversion ratio, more in the lines of five to seven. So again, in other words, for every one energy unit in, we're hoping to yield somewhere in the five to seven. So a, a much higher differential for, our, for, for efficient conversion to the final product of ethanol. The purpose of this whole endeavor has been to integrate a local regional crop that we can use in ethanol plants in the Southwest. Instead of importing Midwestern corn, which is done now, Pinnell Energy is looking very closely at using this crop, sweet sorghum, which is like a desert sugar cane. We can squeeze it, crush it into a juice, and go directly to fermentation. Uh, with corn, they have to break that starch molecule down into glucose using glucose amylase and heat. It's more energy intensive and it's more expensive. So this material uh, is readily grown in Arizona in the southwest. We're hoping it uses less water than corn and it can even be irrigated with uh, wastewater, so it's less energy intensive, possibly less expensive for the farmer to grow. Anytime you work with a new crop or a new product, you have challenges. Uh, the first challenge was that sweet sorghum is bred and used mainly in the southeastern United States, so we're bringing a plant that's not well adapted to this area to see if, in fact, we can grow it in this area, and that was one of the first challenges. Then we have some very simple challenges, like when do you plant it? Uh, how far apart do you plant them? How much water does it take to irrigate them? Uh, how do we harvest them? Uh, how, after the harvest, how do we squeeze the stalks to get the juice out? How do we store the juice before we uh, turn it into ethanol? All these were challenges in some form or other that we have uh, had to address. All of them we've done fairly successfully so far. Uh, we've picked the best variety that we could find, one that works well here, that uses a minimal amount of water. We can grow it on fairly marginal land so it's not competing with food crops. Uh, the engineering has taken a couple years to figure out how best to harvest it, but the engineers are very good at this. And then finding the right uh, machinery to uh, squeeze the sap out of the uh, stalks. Uh, and then uh, we have also been working on transport. This is also an interesting project because for the first time that we know of in the U.S., sweet sorghum juice is being used in a real full-blown ethanol plant. Pinnell Energy's uh, 50 million gallon a year ethanol plant in Maricopa, Arizona uses corn as a primary feedstock, but for the first time they've used tens of thousands of gallons of the sweet sorghum juice to actually make ethanol out of it. And it's, uh, I think it's real uh, groundbreaking because 
Uh, most other universities and other private endeavors are using e fermenting sweet sorghum juice in the field. They're fermenting it and producing ethanol on a small scale. This is fast tracking it right into the ethanol plants that exist. And because Penal Energy's plant uh, has a zero water footprint, um, it has the ability to use this type of a feedstock, it's really a futuristic model for the ethanol industry, unlike all the bad talk you've heard about food versus fuel. This is something we can use right here in Arizona. What this year really was, was, was a demonstration from the field level to the, final, to the final product, and that being ethanol. And in essence, this was a small-scale commercial pilot demonstration of the process and the techniques. Now, that might sound simple. It took a whole lot of, it, it took a whole lot of engineering, uh, different pieces of equipment, bringing it all together, and again, trying to assemble it into the, uh, into the system necessary to accomplish the goals. The Ag Engineering Department from the University of Arizona was absolutely instrumental in some of the fabrication, the special needs of the, the equipment fabrication. The um, Plant Sciences Department of the University of Arizona, some of the Ag Engineering Research faculty, and last but not least, the staff of the U of A Campus Ag Center worked very diligently um, behind the scenes, actually doing a great deal of the actual process and the work growing the crop, being on site for the harvesting, the pressing, the transport to Pinal Energy. And again, our last link in this is Pinal Energy, which is an ethanol plant located in Maricopa, which is accepting our juice from this sweet sorghum and, and calculating all of the conversion ratios, uh, the yields, the economics. Of course, there's an upside to corn ethanol that the public generally doesn't hear of, but folks in agriculture know, and that's the co-products produced by corn ethanol, and that's dry distiller grains. Uh, they produce a lot of that up at uh, Arizona Feed and Pinnell Energy. Well, sweet sorghum has a counter product, and behind me is a field of sweet sorghum bagasse, and what that is is crushed sweet sorghum stalks is what's left after we take the juice out of it, and that has a lot of potential for feed, it has a potential for cellulosic ethanol, and because of its very easily manageable form, uh, university researchers are looking at turning it into pyrolysized products that they can use in power plants. Also, um, Kurt Byers, the private individual we're working with, um, they're looking at using it into pelletized fuel. Both of these products are cleaner burning than coal. They have very little or no sulfur. They're a clean energy alternate fuel. Again, we're producing energy locally in the state. We're growing it. It's a renewable. Besides the sorghum juice, the, the sweet juice out of it, we also have these co-products in the mass of the plant itself. So that's another very important angle that we're looking at with other private companies. Ultimately, what we hope that, that, this pro that the outcome of this project is, is that we've also um, identified or should say unveiled a possible new cash crop for the farmers of Arizona or I should even say the southern United States where this crop is highly adapted to. The University of Arizona is ideally suited to address problems like bioenergy and that's because as a land-grant institution we have engineers and chemists and agronomists and plant breeders and folks in agriculture at all levels and economics uh, that can work together uh, to solve a, a problem. Uh, in fact, we are starting a sustainable bioenergy institute made up of folks from free, three different colleges within the University of Arizona and uh, many different disciplines, many of which I've just mentioned. Uh, and we are looking at more than just uh, ethanol from sweet sorghum because this at best is going to be a bridge to the future. We will continue to uh, find better ways to uh, turn uh, biological products into energy. Just as the petroleum industry started 150 years ago, their first product was kerosene and they threw everything out, else out. After that, they uh, did lots of research and so now we have so many products from, uh, 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 from petroleum that it's seeming, you know, it seems that we're going to have a very hard time replacing them. But in fact, we're at the same place now with the bioenergy crops. Uh, we're also looking at algae, we're looking at other crops, uh, you know, like Waiuli and buffalo gourd, uh, you know, anything that we can think of that would uh, work well in this area, uh, we're looking at as a group and we're uh, writing grants to try to bring in more money to uh, support the Institute as well as we have uh, support from the industry.